Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough, and here is a mini dose of Dr. Debbie where I'm sharing tips, suggestions, strategies, and sometimes just motivation to have you move past your betrayal once and for all. How is betrayal affecting you at work? How is shattered trust affecting you at work? I just came back from this incredible conference. It was called the WeBank Conference. What that is, is we recently became a WBE Women Business Enterprise, and it's where minority businesses, women-owned businesses, things like that, meet with companies to see how we can support each other, how we can work uh, together. And I went there knowing there is not one company that specifically works on helping people move through betrayal, betrayal, trauma, shatter trust. So this is going to be a mountain to climb. It was so fascinating because it was so different what I was presenting, a way to predictably heal from betrayal. And then the responses that I got. Now, here's the thing. At first, it was like, tell me about that. That's kind of interesting. And then quietly, I would hear from so many people, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I've been struggling for 30 years. Another person said, wow, you know something? I noticed my daughter keeps going from relationship to relationship to relationship. I had no idea. I didn't even think that may be what this is. Someone else is telling me uh, that they actually are hurting in sales. Their sales are plummeting because they're so anxious and they can't focus on selling or being there for their team in the way they need because they're so focused on the the trauma and and the impact that this betrayal has caused. So I knew I was onto something here, and it was um, it was just such an interesting experience as we dive in, as the PBT Institute dives in to corporate. But what I did just to really explain my point. And you know, I always talk about the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. And I talk about symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome. So what I did was, for a lot of these companies, was put together uh, the most common symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome and the symptoms that heal as you move through the five stages. So it kind of looks like this. And I was handing this out to everybody. I'm showing this for those of you who are listening. It's this really cool chart that we made. (laughs) Anyway, uh, something like this. Now, we've had... uh, 95,000 people take our post-betrayal syndrome quiz assessment to see to what extent they're struggling. So one of the most common things, and you can imagine this makes perfect sense, is an inability to trust. So 84% of every single one person who has taken that assessment has an inability to trust, 84%. That was actually why I wrote the book, Trust Again. That stat just killed me. But when you think about what that would do to you in business, it would impair team collaboration, right? Like how comfortable are you collaborating with your uh, your teammate if you don't trust the person you trusted the most proved untrustworthy? The next step of that is then you say, well, where was I? How did I not see? How did I not know? So then you, you don't even trust in yourself. So if you don't trust in the person you trusted the most, you don't trust in yourself, then the next you know, evolution of that is, well, then how in the world can I trust in anything or anyone? So here's where you don't trust in your boss, your coworker, your collaborative partner. Resistance to feedback. That's a really big thing if you don't trust, because you're saying, what's their intention behind that feedback? Is it genuine? Is there a hidden agenda somewhere? What's the reason for that? Increased conflict and misunderstandings. Now think about this. If you're trying to be in this collaborative environment and someone has an inability to trust, and then there, uh, there's this increase in conflict and misunderstandings, can you see how that impacts and affects the whole team? Like what kind of environment is happening when there's uh, just more conflicts, more misunderstandings? I mean, the, the work itself may be hard enough And now look at the additional stress and pressure of all of these potential misunderstandings and conflicts. And then you know what you do when that's the case? Then you start walking on eggshells. Then you're like, oh, you know what? This is just way too hard. I'm just going to, I won't even bring it up. Or you just start people pleasing or you start navigating around that person because you just don't want to bring it to their attention. Like so many additional things that just start to happen because Uh, of this, of just that one thing. Okay, here's another one. 
88% struggle with extreme sadness. Now, of course, this is the case. Your heart's been broken. Whether it's a family member, a partner, a friend, your heart is broken. So now if you're walking around with a broken heart, reduce motivation and engagement, right? Like think about it. How incentivized and motivated are you to do your job if your heart's broken? Sure, you're gonna try your best to put it aside, but do you see how this may impact you? Withdrawal from colleagues. You're withdrawing because you're you're hurt. You don't. You're not bringing your best. And then you may say, well, I, "I I just can't even show up. I just can't even be there or or be there fully." So you know what? I'm just gonna. I won't go to that event. I won't participate in that experience. Impact on creativity and problem solving. I mean, this is so real. Let's say you're in a creative role in your work, and now you're consumed by your sadness. How creative can you be? Think about it. You can't, your, your mind can't go to those places where creativity shows up because you're consumed with, with what's hurting you and hurting your heart. 47% had weight changes and digestive issues. So remember, these are the 95,000 people who've taken the post-betrayal syndrome assessment. So if you're having uh, weight changes, and when I say weight changes, in the beginning, you can't hold food down. Later on, you may be using food for comfort, your emotional eating, and digestive issues. Digestive issues, this could be anything, Crohn's, IBS, diverticulitis, constipation, diarrhea, doesn't matter. So when you think of it, just, just take the digestive issues for a moment. If you're not feeling well, how well can you work, right? You're just, you're in pain, you're uncomfortable. But what I think is so, uh, so interesting about why the digestive issue came up Think about what the gut does. It absorbs, digests, and processes food. Well, isn't a betrayal difficult to absorb, digest, and process? Any wonder why the gut is off? And the gut is off because the level of stress is so high, your brilliant system says, well, you know what? You're, it's like you're running from a saber-toothed tiger. You're running from a tiger. It is not the time to focus on digestion. So the digestive system is shut down in order to uh, bring more blood and oxygen to the, lung, the lungs, the heart, the limbs, so you can run to safety. So that's why you're not digesting well. You don't have the resources. And then you're, you're uh, so the, the gut is struggling. And then think about it. You may go to the most well-meaning, amazing gut experts to, and they give you a beautiful protocol. But if a uh, if a, a, a betrayal and shattered trust is at the root of it, how well is that protocol going to work? And then think about it. If you're emotionally eating, now you're soothing. You're trying to soothe through uh, through food. You're using that as, as just a way to numb, avoid, and distract. And then what happens after the binge, you're angry with yourself. You're disgusted at what you've done. Well, that's the perfect setup for another binge. And it's this cycle of never getting to the actual root of it because you're doing your best in all this pain to numb from it and Yes, it's temporary, but the minute you have that last bite, you know it hits you hard. The pain is still there. The problem is still there. And now you're dealing with the additional consequences of what all these binges are doing to your body, to your, to your uh, confidence, to your health. So any wonder how that's going to affect you, think about it, how it affects you on the job would be through your health. Now, all of, if your company is, is paying for all these healthcare costs, well, this is, this is costly because now you have all of these health related issues and diseases very likely coming from uh, the way you're maneuvering and managing as best you can through this experience. Job performance, of course, uh, increased medical leave impact on professional image. So let's say you're in a role where you have to be out there. Maybe you speak, you represent your company, you represent your product, your brand, whatever it is, and you don't feel well. Don't you think that's gonna affect how you show up when you're meeting with someone, when you're putting your message out there? Of course it does. Okay, 78% felt overwhelmed. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, think about the additional mistakes and errors you make. Now, I know personally, when I'm overwhelmed, I will drive by an exit. 
I will forget someone's name. I forget someone's name on a good day, but you know, if I'm overwhelmed, it's even worse. Think about when you're overwhelmed, what that does. Now, the continual and constant sense of overwhelm because you're navigating uh, through the shattered trust and betrayal. The rug has been pulled out from under you. You have all of this additional stuff to do as you're working, as you're raising your family, maybe taking care of aging parents, all the other additional obligations you have. Miss deadlines, right? You're consumed with what's going on. So then you forget a deadline. Or what about just even forgetting someone's birthday or forgetting something that is important to you? Increased risk of burnout. This is so true. Your body can only handle so much stress. We put insane amounts of stress on ourselves. We just keep going until the body says, you know what? I'm just done. Well, something like shattered trust and betrayal exhausts your body. You don't have the reserves. So now you're putting these additional requirements on yourself, and that is a recipe for burnout. 68% had an inability to focus and concentrate. So think about that. Decreased productivity and efficiency. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Poor quality at work. Here you are trying to do your job and do your job well, but it's going to be poor quality because you can't concentrate right? You're just, your concentration has been completely removed. Every time you have a second, your mind goes to your experience, then you're angry, then you're sad, then you're frustrated, then you're everything. And you're taking away from the ability to focus and truly be present and, and be there in the way that your job needs in order to get the work done and the work done well. Uh, difficulty in learning and development. Let's say part of your job is you need to learn new skills. You need to learn new things. Well, you can it is virtually impossible to learn something new when your body's in survival mode. You know, I'll never forget when I had uh, um, I had crashed and burned from, uh, this was not even my betrayal, this was just from stress of toxic relationships. This was way before that. And my, I had, my adrenals had just absolutely tanked. My immune system was shot. And here I was on my treadmill, running and trying to read as well. Cause I used to read on my treadmill. I had one of those book racks and I would try to read. And I remember when I remember when I finally got tested and I was like, I, I don't know what it is. I'm reading the same line like 10 times. It's just not absorbing. And it was so interesting because uh, the, the person who had tested me and we, and we ran a bunch of stress tests and adrenal testing said, you have it you have such brain fog which is real and adrenal dysfunction and all of this and then you're exercising and then you think you're able to absorb information too you can't it's just impossible so it really had me realize and i use this analogy a lot it's like you're continuously running and you're running on a broken leg and you're not giving your body a chance to heal that's what happens when you're you have burnout Okay, um, I said that one. 71% experience low energy. So if you have low energy, think about how that's going to affect your productivity, right? And now think about it. Let's say you're supposed to be present at work. You have things to do and you are absent and you're absent because you just cannot hold it together and it's cost, uh, costing your company uh, increased absenteeism and you're not able to do the work you need to do. Um, Co compromise creativity and innovation. Of course, you can't think straight or when you're betrayed, shatter trust. Okay, 83% felt anger. This is so, I mean, think about this because you're at first, you're very sad. How could this happen? How could they do this to me? And then the sadness turns into anger. How could they do this to me? And then we move towards, uh, and I share this in other episodes. It's almost like a pity, like really? That's what you have to do. And then it moves to compassion. And when you're in compassion, you're healed. That's when you're through stage five. But that's a that's a talk for another day. So when you think about it, if you're angry, how is this going to affect you at work? Well, conf conflicts in the workplace. You, you know, it's, it's like someone's going to get uh, sort of hit by that, as they call it, that stray bullet. It's their own anger because they're not effectively managing it is being taken out on you. It's just, you're the recipient of it. Let's just say if someone else is struggling, but it's not even about you. But, and the person who's feeling that anger, they, you know, they're, they're hurting so badly and they don't know how to manage it. So it's coming out as anger. 
uh, increased stress for others, of course, reputational damage. Think about this. If you're a business owner and or you're, you, you know, you're a business owner or you have someone in your company and they're struggling with shatter trust and betrayal and they're in that stage where they're very, very angry. Now you're worried about your reputation because in a moment of anger, they may express something that they weren't able to hold back because they, they haven't moved through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough and they are in that anger stage or they're just, they're struggling. They're so, it's almost like a, you know, a, a, a steam kettle, right? It's just pent up and then it just, it just lets loose and there goes your reputation. And it is so much harder to, uh, fix a damaged reputation, then just keep a good one. So think about what happens if someone is angry, whether that's you or someone within your company. 80% battled stress and anxiety. So what does that cause? Paralysis by overanalysis, right? Analysis paralysis. Because if you have anxiety, you're saying, I can't even think straight. I'm going to make a wrong move. And you may be hesitant to make any move. And meanwhile, your company's counting on you or your business, your own business is counting on you. You need to make a move. Health issues, of course, that's what anxiety, if you have this chronic prolonged stress, you're headed for every single stress-related symptom, illness, condition, disease, burnout, again, burnout risk. And I'll give you one more, 81% felt a loss of personal power. Uh, again, out of 95,000 plus people. So how is that going to affect you? Decreased productivity. How productive are you going to be if you don't feel uh, powerful? You don't have that sense of personal power. Difficulty in collaboration and trust building. How comfortable are you in collaborating if you don't trust yourself and you don't trust your ideas? You don't feel confident in what you are sharing. So maybe you hold back. Well, what's that going to do to your business? And difficulty in decision making. You don't trust your own discernment, your ability to make decisions. So you don't make decisions. And maybe because of that, you miss out on something you're supposed to do, something you're supposed to be a part of, something that's supposed to be, uh, you're supposed to take on for your division, your department, your own company, and you don't because you don't trust yourself, you don't have the confidence because of what this betrayal has done. Do you see how this shattering of trust and unhealed betrayal affects you in business? I mean, it's, it's just so, it affects you, of course, uh, outside of the workplace, right? In your family, with your friends, your coworkers, or all of it. But what it does in the workplace, it's shattering. It's shattering your ability to show up fully in the way you need to in order to run your business, in order to be a part of a business, in order to just represent a business, all of it. The good news is, as you, as you hear me say every single episode, it when you move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough, you move through all of it. And that's the exciting thing. Like, for example, and I, I those of you who are uh, listening, I'm showing right now this chart I made of the most common symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome, how it affects people at work, and then the symptoms that heal as you move through the stages. There is no guesswork here. Remember, I did the research, so I have the proof. As you move through the stages, certain symptoms just heal. But the most common place we get stuck, stage three, that's where you have the most symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome. That's where companies are paying the most in healthcare cost, absenteeism, turnover, low morale, low productivity, all of it. And that's where you're wondering, am I going to lose my job? Am I going to get fired? That's where people come into the PBT Institute saying, oh my gosh, I, I can't hold it together, all of this. So what are the reasons to heal? You want to be fully you. You don't want to walk around with these health symptoms. You don't want to walk around with this mental, emotional anguish. You want to get the issues out of the tissues. It doesn't matter if this is a repeat betrayal uh, stemming from your first betrayal. Maybe you were a little kid and you've had relationships confirming a belief that you created out of it that you were less than unworthy, unlovable, undeserving, whatever, either way. And you may realize at this very moment, oh my gosh, I have spent a lifetime having relationships to confirm a belief that no longer serves 
beautiful. And here's where a lot of people get angry because they say, oh my gosh, this has been going on 30, 40 years. It doesn't matter. If you didn't realize this right now, it could be going on another 30, 40 years. The beauty is you can't change what you're not aware of. What I want to do is make you so aware of how this betrayal, even if it happened decades ago, is affecting you today. Just, just because it happened a long time ago does not mean it's not holding you back now. It just means you're in stage three longer. We could be in stage three for life. Transformation begins in stage four. Now, I'm not saying you're not doing wonderful things to move you through. That's great. If that's the case, if you're in stages four and stage five, beautiful. And we actually have within the PBT Institute, this amazing um, handout that shows its milestones and markers, what you'd be seeing, feeling, experiencing at each stage. This way, you know, if you are not seeing, feeling, experiencing these certain things, do not stop right here. It is predictable. Keep going until you get to the next stage, until you look, feel, live, perform better. This isn't just winging it here. This is this is what the research proved. So I, I just want you to know that there is so, so much to you on the other side of your healing. If you've been betrayed, if your trust has been shattered, it wreaks havoc on your body, on your mind, and your heart. You've also been initiated, and you've been initiated into uh, this opportunity of you're not just you're not just staying under the radar anymore. You've been hit so hard, and because of it, you have all the incentive you need to transform. Most people don't transform. You know, they don't undergo this transformation tr transformation unless they've been hit hard. It's not the kind of thing where you just wake up like on a random Tuesday and you're like, you know, it's a good day to transform. It doesn't really work like that. You have been so you have hit rock bottom, or you've had this intense moment of anguish, moment of clarity, where you say either that's enough, and I am, that's it, I don't care what it takes, I'm doing this, or you just have this realization that you've been tolerating something for so long that just no longer suits you. Now, if you're one of those people who's just been hanging out in stage three for decades and you didn't even realize you're there, maybe you realize, I've been playing so small. I'm settling for okay. I'm settling for mediocre in my health, in my work, in my relationships. You're not meant for that. So here's where a crash is a beautiful thing because it gives you all of that incentive and then momentum to really become uh, this version of yourself that never would have happened had the experience not happened. As you hear me say all the time, that's trauma well served. So if we can help you within the PBT Institute, that's all we do. Whether you're an individual just looking for help, whether you're an you know, entire company or team, the idea is the stage five version of you. If you had a glimpse of what your stage five version of you would is, you would never waste another minute in stage three. Let's get back your health. Let's get back your mind. Let's get back your, your body. Let's get back everything you want and so much more. And that's all in stage four and stage five. So if I can help you with any of that, that's all I'm here to do. I hope this has helped you realize what's happening when, uh, when this unhealed betrayal, when this when this shattered trust is left unhealed. It's only that it's unhealed. It's not uh, only for some people and not for others. This is a roadmap every single person can go through. It's only moving through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. So I hope this helped and I'll see you next time. You need the right tools, support, and the right community to move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. And we have all that within the PBT Institute. So join us at the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, thepbtinstitute.com. There's a version of you who's so confident, healthy, peaceful, and happy on the other end of your healing. And we can't wait to help you get there. We got you. Thanks for listening. And here's to your breakthrough.